Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about migraine. That is one of the common presentations of uh, headache uh, in emergency room. Migraine is a type of uh, vascular headache, but we will see what are the other common uh, headaches we can get in emergency room. It can be due to migraine, tension headache, cluster headache, raised intracranial tension, benign paroxysmal headaches, intracranial space occupying lesions, temporal arthritis, especially in elderly, benign intracranial hypertension, systemic hypertension. Then other headaches also can come to ER, post head injury headache, post coital headache, post lumbar puncture headache, sinusitis, glaucoma, some drugs like uh, NTG or other nitrates, amphetamine, alcohol, trigeminal neuralgia, atypical facial pain, post herpetic neuralgia. So all these uh, conditions also can have headache. But one of the common cause for headache in emergency room is migraine. It's a vascular headache. Now whenever we get a, get a patient with headache to emergency room, we have to see is it a serious problem or it's a mild problem. The indications for a severe, severe underlying pathology is severe headache first time in life, worst headache ever, rapid progression of headache over days or weeks, onset of headache after age 55, abnormal neuro neurological findings and convulsions, fever or systemic signs, vomiting, headache induced by bending, lifting, cough, headache that disturbs sleep or presence immediately upon awakening. So one of the most important factor about migraine is migraine starts very early in life. When you are child itself, you can have headache. So all these features, you can, whatever you are seeing in this slide, they are not classical of migraine, but vomiting uh, and other things can be there in migraine. But migraine headache starts very early in life and they are having a typical uh, clinical finding. Almost all headaches or all episodes of headache, you have similar finding. But here uh, what we are seeing is first time severe headache, very worst headache, headache starts after 55, headache is not relieved by sleep. All these things are not typical feature of migraine. In that case, it may not be migraine or it may be something else. Migraine is a most common type of vascular headache. It uh, Usually it is severe throbbing type of headache. It is mainly unilateral associated with photophobia. Uh, it is mostly inherited. Many of the family members can have similar finding. KCNK18 and CSNK1D genes have been implicated in the pathogenesis of migraine with aura. So what we have to understand is migraine uh, can be associated with uh, uh, like uh, many other uh, family involvement can be there. Uh, so many other family members can also have similar finding. Now one of the most important feature of migraine, otherwise we can call it as migraine, uh, classical migraine. Classical migraine, uh, it is mostly associated with aura. Aura is often visual, but it can be sensory, verbal, motor disturbances. So this aura will precede the headache. Sometimes we get only aura, headache may not be there. But most of the time in classical migraine, aura will be there. Aura can be visual aura. Uh, there is silver, uh, silvery zigzag lines in front of eyes, visual field disturbances, temporary visual loss. Uh, spreading of numbness over, over one part of the body to another part. These all are auras. This aura indicates a cortical spreading depression uh, throughout the neuronal system. Uh, so that produces uh, aura in most of the patients. Uh, but what we have to understand is migraine with aura is called as classical migraine, but Classical migraine is not very common in clinical practice. If you take uh, uh, like 100 patients only, few of them will typically tell the, about the history of aura. Many of them may have aura, but they may not notice it. We have to take a detailed history to 
know whether the patient is having a classical migraine with aura or without aura. Most of the time the headache in migraine is unilateral. It is throbbing type of headache. You can, if you see the uh, arteries in a patient who is having migraine, if the patient touches that on that artery, you can see the impulses on that artery. So that is also a very classical feature of migraine. Most of the attacks are associated with nausea and vomiting and most of the attacks are relieved with sleep. These are the typical features of migraine. Now even after sleep, some patients can have uh, uh, severe weakness or uh, that post-traumal uh, fatigability. All these things also are classical features. Now if you see the types of migraine, we have seen that aura. Aura can be sensory, motor or visual. Migraine with aura or classical migraine is uh, one of the most important. Uh, types of migraine but if the patient is having no aura that is called as migraine without aura that is a common type of migraine so if you take uh, uh, migraine patients history most of the time you don't get any aura in these patients migraine sign headache that is only aura without headache so aura itself uh, depending on the aura itself migraine is classified into three with aura without aura or only aura now, ophthalmoplegic migraine. Ophthalmoplegic migraine is a rare uh, type of uh, headache. Uh, here, patient can have third cranial nerve palsy, so that the movement of eyes are uh, involved there. Retinal migraine, again, it is called as ocular migraine. Uh, that can be associated with brief uh, uh, history of blindness, and patient develops some flashing of light in front of eye suddenly patient develops headache that is retinal migraine so most of the migraine will have uh, some visual auras some patients can have third nerve palsy associated with migraine some patients can have visual loss associated with migraine so uh, what we understand is it's a spreading of the uh, uh, problem throughout the neuronal system so from one part to other part it is spreading headache can be there sometimes weakness can be there sometimes uh, other neurological findings hemiplegic migraine is a different type of migraine where the patient is having headache but he can have weakness of uh, one side this can be seen in uh, family members also that's why it is called as familial hemiplegic migraine Focal migraine uh, is associated with focal weakness, neurological weakness associated with uh, headache. Bacillar migraine is another condition where you get brainstem type of aura. We will see what it is afterwards. Migraine equivalence, that is another important problem. Many of the patients who is having migraine, sometimes they can have severe vertigo. That is one of the common presentation of migraine. Vertigo, vertigo but sometimes uh, associated with migraine, they can have a headache. Sorry, vertigo, they can have a headache, but sometimes there will not be headache at all. Only vertigo will be there. Many patients with migraine can have abdominal pain also. So that is also a problem in when we are treating with a migraine. We will not be able to give uh, NSAIDs because NSAIDs sometimes can aggravate the abdominal problem in who is having migraine. Vomiting also can be there in many patients. So again, uh, oral tablets may not work in patients who is having migraine because they will have severe vomiting. Some patients, it will be mild type of migraine they, where they have mild headache. We can give tablets, oral tablets, it can subside. But sometimes patient can have vertigo, vomiting, nausea. That type of patients, we will not be able to give any tablets. We will have to give, treat the patient with injection. If you see the symptoms of migraine, so commonest symptom is uh, unilateral throbbing headache. That is classical finding. But some patients you can have bilateral headache also. But whatever it is, a, it is a throbbing type of headache. It is associated with vomiting and nausea, abdominal pain. These are the most important types of uh, uh, presentation. Then uh, uh, they can uh, like uh, the migraine can be relieved with by uh, sleep. But some patients, it will not be relieved by sleep. And we have to see the triggers also that we will see afterwards. Suppose the trigger is uh, uh, like uh, not taking 
tea or food if we if the patient takes tea or food it can be uh, relieved so migraine classical presentation is unilateral throbbing type of head headache with uh, associated with nausea vomiting abdominal pain some patients can develop vertigo syncope seizures many patients can have photophobia or, or uh, phonophobia but what we have to understand is sometimes severe light itself can induce uh, 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 migraine so photophobia is a feature of migraine again severe light also can trigger migraine scalp tenderness is another classical feature of uh, migraine most of the patients will have tenderness somewhere on the scalp if you press on that area there will be slight relieving uh, sensation on headache cutaneous allodynia is a perception of pain produced by uh, some small stimulus of normal skin like brushing of hair touching the scalp so many patients will complain while combing the hair they can have uh, different type of sensation on that area where they have scalp tenderness other symptoms are visual disturbances zigzag lines in the visual field temporary visual loss that is a very common finding paresthesia especially on one, one part of the uh, head or face altered consciousness is not very common but some patients in emergency room they admit get admitted with altered behavior loss of uh, sensorium coma all these things so it will be a close differential diagnosis for stroke also sometimes uh, patient who is having stroke or post ictal stage or migraine all those these patients will present encephalitis all these patients will present with altered behavior focal neurological uh, deficits are also rare hemiplegic migraine uh, or other types of focal neurological deficits also can present with uh, weakness seizures altered behavior now basilar migraine uh, that is migraine with brain stem aura it's a rare type of migraine Uh, they can have symptoms like uh, vertigo dysarthria tinnitus diplopia ataxia uh, bilateral visual symptoms bilateral paresthesia decreased level of consciousness and hearing impairment so all these things can present like a posterior circulation stroke so brain stem type of migraine we have to take a detailed history because uh, some patients uh, can have previous histories unnecessarily ct scan or mri may not be required but if the patient presenting with first time problem then we will have to take a uh, take a mri and see whether any posterior circulation stroke is there or not other symptoms are uh, like uh, abdominal migraine patient can have uh, abdominal uh, pain tenderness and all that retinal migraine we have seen that uh, focal uh, scotoma or visual loss <coughs> now chronic migraine is uh, uh, defined as headache occurring more than 15 days in a month for more than 3 months at least 8 days uh, in a month he will have headache menstrual migraine is associated with menstrual period many uh, female patients are complaining about this menstrual type of migraine they have uh, progressive or mild headache throughout the menstrual period whatever tablets uh, we prescribe th that will not be relieved one of the most difficult problem uh, in migraine is this menstrual migraine now we can see the activators of migraine uh, sunlight traveling stress hunger perimenstrual periods lack of sleep uh, chocolates red wine cheese oral contraceptive pills all those things can produce migraine now indications for neuroimaging in case of migraine uh, so whenever we have headache uh, we normally take ct scan but in migraine headache if we know that the diagnosis is migraine most of the time we will not take any ct or mri in that patient so indications for neuroimaging in a uh, case of migraine is the first time headache recent significant change in patterns of migraine unexplained neurological symptoms or signs headache always on same side headache not responding to treatment new onset headache after 50 years new onset of headache in patients with cancer or hiv infection associated symptoms and signs such as fever neck stiffness papilledema cognition cognitive impairment personality change what uh, 
uh, whenever we have a migraine patient uh, normally we don't take a, a ct scan or mri but uh, sometimes we can miss uh, ne neurological chronic neurological problems which can present as migraine like aneurysms and all can typically present as migraine many patients are uh, if we go according to the guidelines sometimes we can miss also so it is always uh, better to explain the patient that uh, need of mri may be required in a patient who is having repeated attacks of headache but if it, the symptoms are increasing only according to guidelines if the symptoms are suddenly increasing or the pattern is changing or if uh, occurs first time after 50 years or first time severe headache that type of headaches we we need to take uh, mri one more thing we have to understand is if the patient is having uh, uh, pain relief with the minimal uh, uh, minimal drugs like paracetamol itself if the pain is re getting relieved then most of the time it is not a serious issue if the pain is not relieved by a routine drugs then it can be even a serious issue so how to manage migraine that is very very important we have to advise the patient to avoid triggering factors like most of the patients the triggering factor is exposure to sunlight in that type of patient they have to uh, they have to avoid that exposure sudden exposure to sunlight or they have to use cap or uh, cooling glasses uh, during exposure to sunlight uh, another important uh, triggering factor is uh, not taking food at correct times Uh, that type of patients we are advised uh, to take uh, food at regular timings uh, otherwise they can get migraine now those are taking tea around 4 o'clock if they don't take tea uh, around 4 o'clock then they develop migraine and suddenly if you are take some patients are taking coffee coffee is a trigger for migraine in some patients coffee can also be a reliever for migraine in some patients so depending on the food pattern some may develop uh, headache on not taking tea not taking coffee or suddenly taking coffee suddenly taking chocolates all these things can be trigger some uh, perfume scents also can trigger migraine so we have to avoid the uh, uh, triggering factors so only patient can tell about the triggering factor so we have to take a detailed history what is the triggering factors mild migraine mostly we can give paracetamol naproxen aspirin and as i said so one of the most commonly used uh, drug in migraine is aspirin dispirin dispirin is a dispersible aspirin nowadays we are not getting this tablet so we can use simple aspirin also uh, or paracetamol is equally effective 1 gram paracetamol can be given or any of the nsaids can be given only thing uh, in frequent migraine nsaid usage should be Uh, reduce because it can have its own side effects so we can go for paracetamol that's a safer drug now other severe cases we can use nsaids antiemetics that is very important most of the patients who is having migraine will have vomiting sensation and when we give nsaids the vomiting can be aggravated so antiemetics has to be given along with nsaids or pain reliever metoclopramide is a ideal drug for that uh, that can be given then 5hd agonist that we'll see what is 5hd uh, agonist 5hd agonist or 5 hydroxy tryptamine agonist most important drug is ergotamin ergotamin is available as tablet nasal spray or we can even give it as a sublingual route so ergotamin is available with caffeine and cyclicin ergotamin caffeine paracetamol percroft uh, paracetamol all these combinations are available so we can use one of the uh, combinations and treat it 1 to 2 mg stat has to be given oral spray 0.5 mg is administered as single spray or after sometimes we can repeat it subcutaneous injections also available any of the route we can try it's a very good drug only if the patient is having a complicated migraine neurological uh, focal neurological finding or brain stem uh, uh, findings are there then don't try this because it ca it can sometimes aggravate the vasospasm and create more problems another important drug is tryptans sumatriptan almotriptan risatriptan all these things are available sumatriptan 50 to 100 mg at onset and repeat after 2 hours risatriptan uh, dispersible uh, tablets are available that also can be given they inhibit the release of vasoactive peptides promotion vasoconstriction and block 
pain pathways in the brain stem so that can be tried so this is one of the most uh, effective drug in uh, uh, types of drug in migraine treatment risatriptan is very very uh, freely available nowadays it's uh, it's a dispersible type of uh, tablets are available nowadays acute menstrual migraine is another uh, important problem what we see in our cl clinical practice uh, here we can use uh, sumatriptan ergotamine uh, perimenstrual estrogen dihydro uh, ergotamine nasal spray magnesium sulfate also can be used so magnesium sulfate is given in many patients uh, who is having migraine with uh, various types of effects effects some patients uh, they give very good relief of symptoms some patients it may not work at all so uh, depends on the uh, patient scenario sometimes uh, we have to uh, change the uh, practice now whenever we get a patient who is having migraine with repeated headaches continuous headaches or uh, many days in a month if they are not able to go for work uh, we have to give prophylaxis so indications for prophylaxis more than two headaches per month with disability lasting more than three days in a month then we can give prophylaxis prolonged headache more than two days with disability we can give prophylaxis neurological complication also we can give prophylaxis there are a lot of drugs which is available for prophylaxis we routinely use propranolol that's a beta blocker Fluenaracin. These are the most commonly available uh, used drugs for migraine. Other drugs are topiramate, uh, lamotrigine, amitriptyline, dorthepine, fluoxetine, sodium valproate, ciproheptidine, verapamil, AC inhibitor, gabapentin, oral magnesium tablets. So all these things are used in migraine prophylaxis, but most commonly used drugs are propranolol and fluenaracin and anti-epileptic drugs like topiramate, lamotrigine and sodium valproate uh, all these things another important uh, treatment newer treatment is botulinum toxin it is useful in patients with intractable chronic migraine that has not responded to at least three conventional preventive drugs the injections are administered to the scalp and temple it can reduce the frequency and severity of migraine attacks after two to three months of injections that is very useful uh, drug uh, in chronic and intractable headaches botulinum toxin injection that relieves the spasm of the arteries and muscles there now opioids many doctors give opioids to give faster relief for headache but one of the complication of opioids is one or two times if you give opioid for a migraine patient then they come only for this injection so they create sometimes uh, they create problem in emergency room because they need that opioid repeated opioid that will become a habit for them so this is a habit forming drug avoid this uh, drug unnecessarily usage of this drug can create problem for uh, our practice so opioids are very good drug which can relieve the headache very fast but patient will uh, uh, like uh, repeatedly they come only for this injection so it is not uh, it is not to give not uh, to be advised to drug uh, to give this drug in a uh, treatment treatment regime of migraine other facts if the patient is having hypertension associated with hypertension we can go for beta blocker or verapamil or fluenaracin for the treatment of migraine if the patient is having depression amitriptyline Menlafaxin can be given. If the patient is having epilepsy, valproate or topiramate can be selected. If the patient is having insomnia, amitriptyline can be given. If the patient is obesity, topiramate can be tried. If the patient is having Reynolds phenomenon, verapamil or fluenaracin can be tried. Because all these drugs which are used for migraine prophylaxis, that has got another reaction also. So whenever the migraine is associated with this type of diseases, you can select one of these uh, drugs so that we can reduce the pill burden in this patient. There are newer drugs like uh, cal calcitonin gene related peptide, uh, erenumab, fremanosumab, 
galcan and sumap all these things also can be tried in patients who is having intractable migraine they are monoclonal antibodies directed against cgrp receptors that is used for migraine prophylaxis so some other newer treatments are available that is at present it is not available in our country transcranial magnetic stimulator vagus nerve stimulation both of them give variable uh, results in different type of patients so they also can be tried in acute migraine so we have discussed about one of the most common presentations that is headache to emergency room in that headache patients one of the most important uh, problem is migraine migraine presents with unilateral throbbing type of headache associated with vomiting so we have to give pain relievers we have to give antiemetics good sleep is mandatory you can give the drugs which can be ergotamine or uh, any drugs which can be tried in the acute phase and with anesthetics or pain reliever or with paracetamol then prophylactic drug should be given only if the patient is having repeated attacks other factors also should be considered one of the important thing is whether to take ct scan or mri in patients who is having migraine that is also very important so only if there that is indicated only we have to take a ct or mri otherwise uh, ct and mri is not request, required in patients who is having migraine thank you